Hello and welcome to the Rob Burgess Show. I'm of course your host, Rob Burgess. On this our 209th episode, a returning guest is Ash Burgess. My lovely wife, Ash Burgess, has been a guest on 26 previous episodes. For a complete list, check the show notes. Ash Burgess has a dusty degree in religious studies and an appetite for both high and low culture. She strives to celebrate the best of every season with her young children. Follow her on Instagram at Ash Burgess, all one word, that's A-S-H-B-U-R-G-E-S-S, and subscribe to her channel on YouTube. And now on to the show. Merry Christmas, Ash. Merry Christmas, Rob. Welcome back to the Rob Burgess Show. Thank you. Very excited to be here. Yes. Feeling very Christmassy. I know. And your Christmas socks? Not just my Christmas socks. I just finished drinking a cup of hot cocoa, and we just finished watching a Christmas episode of The Office, so I'm feeling really very, very Christmassy right now. Mm -hmm. We're sitting by the lighted Christmas tree. Yeah. Let's turn off the lights so we can leave the ambient. Oh, that, that's really nice, yeah. yeah. I like the looks of that. Mm-hmm. Very Christmassy. I feel like we do a Christmas episode most years now, don't we? I remember doing one last year. Yeah. But I'm excited. We have a lot to talk about Christmas-related. We do. I mean, I love talking about Christmas-related things, so I'm excited, too. But um, you've been doing a lot of shopping. I have. I mean, as it's... usual? Well, yeah, as usual for Christmas, yes. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's probably the most shopping that I do all year. Yes. But you're mostly done at this point, right? Well, I'm, I'm done except for, you know, I do need to stuff practice stuff the stockings and make sure that I don't need a few extra things in there. But other than that, I'm all done for our, our immediate, immediate family. family yeah. There's definitely some serious things that like we need to work on together for some of, you know, the extended family. Although we've got, we've got a few of those things going as well, mm -hmm. but we're done with the kids and I'm done with you. I think you're at least nearly done with me. Mm -hmm. I've got the main parts of your presence all sorted, so. Yeah, so I mean, I, I have done a great deal of shopping over the last course of the last couple months. Mm -hmm. But obviously this year has been challenging, at least, you know, perceptionally for people mm -hmm. as far as the supply chain issues that people yeah. are. Do you feel like things have been actually harder to get or do you feel like people like think they're harder to get and they're making it harder to get because it's like you know what i mean it's like a self-perpetuating thing i don't think things have been as far as what i have noticed this year versus say last year or the year before that mm -hmm. i don't think things have really been harder to get other than I think there is some possibility that things may be a little bit harder to get because I think since most people were worried, I think most people started their shopping slightly earlier. Mm. Therefore, some things may have been harder to get if you normally might have waited until, you know, people that maybe normally could have gotten away with waiting until two weeks before Christmas and still gotten the very specific things that they wanted. Mm -hmm. Those people who are shopping right now, I think are probably running up against disappointment because mm -hmm. right about now is when I've started to see some things being like, I've started to see more things are sold out now than a few weeks ago when I was doing the bulk of my shopping, I really wasn't running into stuff being sold out. Mm -hmm. I think there, there are a few things that I think I've seen go in and out of stock. But I think that happens every year. I definitely was spurred to action earlier than I usually would be. Me too. And it wasn't because I so much thought that the supply chain issues would definitely affect us naturally. As that, I mean, I guess my, my thought is that I knew they would affect us in the sense that I could kind of read the room of like everybody starting to shop earlier and so, of course, that means that things are going to sell out earlier. Like, anything that's, like, the kind of thing that might sell out might sell out earlier because of that. Not necessarily because of the supply chain so much as just because of the general sense of panic that I think people are experiencing this year. Yeah. I also think that people are going a little harder this year. Mm -hmm. You know, due to... I, th I think any time people feel like... I saw a DJ in Nordstrom for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you remember that one time we were in Nordstrom and that man in the suit offered us some pizza... Yes. And I wanted to ask that man, like... A series of escalating questions. <laughs> only because it's like, 
you know, we're, we're in Nordstrom with, at the time, we had two toddlers with us. Mm-hmm. And does Nordstrom really want two toddlers eating pizza in their store? I mean, Nordstrom has some very expensive items, like, that a toddler could easily wipe pizza grease hands on to mm-hmm. in a matter of seconds. Yes. No, it's it's a problem. And but that was a few years ago. But Although I think they still have a food They do have situation. a cafe, but I, I'm not saying Nordstrom shouldn't have a cafe. I'm just saying I question the... I question how wise it is to offer a loose piece of pizza to... Uh, two toddlers in the midst of like a high-end department store. I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to like sit down with your toddler at the cafe in Nordstrom. I'm just saying like I don't want to try to be responsible for keeping my toddler from wiping pizza grease on the things in in the Nordstrom as I try to like shuffle them through to the shoe department. Yeah. No, that seems ill-advised for them, <laughs> if anyone. I mean, I appreciate that they didn't discriminate against us and, like, not offer us the pizza, since mm-hmm. apparently there was pizza to be offered. Still, it was kind of like, please, no. <laughs> but, but, but no, there wasn't a DJ that time, but you said you saw a DJ in the Nordstrom. Well, yes, well, I mean, I didn't order things online so much as get them in store, mostly, because... I was also worried about shipping mm-hmm. issues in addition to supply chain issues. So even though you gave me some ideas of what to buy, and I could have gotten those items, a lot of them online, some of them obviously not in store, but like any time I could shop in store, I did. Yeah, and see, and I definitely think you are wise in that sense because I do think if you can just lock the items down and know you have them. There's got to be a certain piece in that. For me, though, with some, I just feel like I have a million children. I mean, I know you do too, but, (laughs) but you're more able to just zip off on your own. Yes. Whereas between not, between me not wanting to, to take the kids into stores due to, you know, the current times we're living in and just the general stress of going into any store at any time with like a group of children, for me, that makes in the balance of things, online shopping easier. Whereas for you, like if I was just, if it was just me zipping stealthily through the Mm -hmm. store, I would totally, totally do that. But you've had issues online with things getting canceled out. I have. I've had that issue both with Target and Amazon with things that... And these are the hot items. Well, not all of them. I mean, okay, so there's two, there's a couple different issues going on here. So the issue with Target is that I have begun to suspect that Target does this intentionally. I could be wrong, but I do think Target may... Target, if you want to respond to the Rob Burgess show, please do so. (laughs) I I think that Target may intentionally create shortages to make certain items kind of feel hotter. Mm. And the reason I'm... The reason I'm... What I mean by this is that Target will often have things sell out and then it restocks like in the night. And they sell out and it restocks like two days later, it'll restock like in the night. So with Target, it it creates a situation where instead of just being able to, if there's certain things you want that are those items that keep re, you know, selling out, instead of just being able to kind of do all your shopping and place a big order, I found myself with certain things that I wanted to get having to, you know, spend like a couple weeks refreshing the Target website, you know, every now and then to see if finally the items that I wanted were in stock and buy them or you know sometimes the items in stock but I would hesitate Mm -hmm. because I wasn't sure about buying it at that time or a lot of it for me too is that it's kind of like kind of a Tetris-y situation when I'm doing online shopping because I don't like to pay for shipping so I do try to bundle things that I'm shopping for to kind of get at once so that I can get that free shipping threshold but I also don't want to buy random things that I wouldn't have bought anyway because then you're also I mean it, you might as well pay for shipping if you're going to buy random things that you wouldn't have paid for because then you're still spending more money. I try to buy things that I was planning to buy, but all at once in such a combination so that I can get the free shipping. Mm-hmm. So trying to buy the right things enough to get the free shipping and also to hit items in stock at once on Target has led to a lot of me like refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. Target also will show you what is in stock at the stores near you as well as what's in stock online and often there's a discrepancy 
Like, there are certain items that Target doesn't seem to carry at all in stores. And then there are some stores that carry certain items and not others. Or just an item will be in stock in your store but not online. Like, sometimes, like, our Target store will have one of a single item that's not in stock online for shipping. So you could order it for pickup. But if before, but right. if somebody at the store puts it in their car and wheels away with it before the Target people go to get it to hold it for pickup, then your item gets canceled well, out. That's so what that's, I was going to say is that yeah. I don't feel like those numbers are always accurate as far as how many are available at what stores. Yeah, and so that's, I think, what you're talking about with some of the struggle I've had with orders getting canceled out is that I've ordered a lot of stuff for pickup from Target. Kind of going into what you were saying about how you want to just have the stuff in hand and not have to wait for it to be shipped. Mm -hmm. Also, Target's shipping has had some weird issues. So, but I've ordered things online for pickup and then they cancel out the order two hours later instead of saying your order's ready. They're like, oh, one of your items is no longer available. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Right. And if it's available for shipping, they'll offer to ship it to you for free, which is nice. But if it's not available for shipping, it's just kind of like, well, game over. Mm -hmm. And so that has kind of sucked, especially when it is a situation where I bundled it with other stuff so I could... Because you, you also... It counts towards your shipping threshold if you're picking up items and getting them shipped to you. Mm -hmm. But then later, you know, if you're trying to then get it... You know, it's it's complicated. Mm -hmm. But so there's... Yeah, so I've had items canceled out in that way. I've also had some things go missing that I ordered from Target. Mm. Like, well, you remember that one kind of large item. Yeah. I'm trying not to say specifically what too many things are in case our kids are like still listening but you remember we had that kind of one large item that we ordered mm -hmm. and it was supposed to come and it was supposed to come and it was supposed to come and then a week later we finally called them and we're like hey where's our thing and it just never never came but they did fortunately send us a new one mm -hmm. and the, who knows what happened to the other one i assume it's just lost somewhere in the like postal system yeah exactly that actually happened with something from Amazon this year also. Remember that package that had to be destroyed or whatever? Yeah. I mean, I say that jokingly. All, all I know is that the item was supposed to show up. It was supposedly out for delivery. Because you know how Amazon sends you the thing that says your item's out mm -hmm. for delivery. It was out for delivery. And then it said that the item was undeliverable. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I just, I just jokingly like say, what? like, it had to be destroyed. Like, what happened to the item between when it went out for delivery and when it was Did it literally fall off a truck at some point? Like Yeah, like, that was, that was kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. But then I also did have, the th other thing you were referring to is that just for my own entertainment, I like to try to kind of predict what the hot toys are going to be. Mm -hmm. And I did correctly predict what one of the hottest toys would be this year. And I did attempt to get one, and I'm mad because I still get it. I don't think I'm gonna get think it. I think happen. Amazon is just playing with my heart here. And the thing is, it's gonna be okay if we don't get it. But I'm just angry because I ordered it months ago, and it was set to deliver. And then, and it was the kind of thing where I ordered it, and it was supposed to deliver, you know, sometime later. By the time it was supposed to deliver, like the day before it was supposed to deliver, they sent me a notification saying that the delivery had been delayed somewhat indefinitely. And at that point, by the time they sent me that notification, it was too late to get it from anywhere else because it's completely sold out. Mm -hmm. Like I would have to, I, I, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to pay a scalper like an upcharge for this thing. So, but as far as like getting it from another legitimate store, how like much that, would you have to? Like, what would it be like? Twice as much? Not necessarily twice as much. I would probably have to pay like twenty five extra dollars. Mm. But I don't want to pay twenty five extra dollars because, like, honestly, this is the kind of thing that like I want this, and I do think it would be fun for the kids and us to like enjoy. I don't think it's even worth its going rate. Because it's not it's not the kind of toy that I most like to get for our kids. The kind of things that I think are the best investment are really open-ended things that the kids are going to use and use and use. Like, you know, the toys that, like, shockingly, every day the kids are playing with, like... Like the ice cream? Yes, like the pretend, like the pretend foods in the play kitchen. Yeah. Those things get used both as pretend foods and in a myriad of other ways every day by all the kids. People fight over them constantly. <laughs> but that's a good investment. In the, yes. If you think about, like, that's like, like a $25 wooden cake pop set that, like... 
three years later, three children are still like almost coming to blows over like like to use like People every are using day. Using microphones every single day. Yes, they're, it, it's it's a cake pop. It's a microphone. It's like a poking device. It's like yeah. a, a, whatever you know, or like those like silk scarves. Oh my Kids gosh. play with those silk scarves every day. I have been wronger about <laughs> some things in my life, but not many. But the silk scarves. I saw these silk scarves. How much are they, like, a, a scarf? They're like, maybe 16 to $20. Please. I thought that was a lot for a single scarf. But the amount of the amount that they've actually played Every with them has been totally day, worth that. One of them is, like, pulling it over their face and dancing around, or, like, they're, like, It's a costume. It's a, it's a Rapunzel hair. It's, it's like, it's a certain, blanket for a baby doll. It's, like, part of a tent. Those it's, people have the recipe. They have the formula. Like, they, they know what they're doing. Like, they know what children want, and apparently it's play silks. <laughs> but those are the kind of toys I like, or, like, the magnet tiles. Mm -hmm. Like, the building, like, toys and, and yeah. Legos and, like dolls and like figurines things like that get so much play value like that open-ended kind of play those are the kind of things that i think are a good investment mm -hmm. a lot of the hot toys are just very very amusing and there's a there's a lot of wow factor to open them and then i don't know how far they go beyond that Mm -hmm. So I really don't even want to pay the amount that like we would need to pay like normally to get this other than that Just for my own entertainment. I want to like have the satisfaction of like bringing it home mm -hmm. And I do think that the kids would enjoy receiving it mm -hmm. It'll be okay if we don't get it though because they it's it's like barely on their radar mm -hmm. And like I, I honestly think they're gonna like a lot of the other stuff that we're getting them more. So it's fine. It's just, it bothers me because I feel like I was like, I did the right things to get it. And like Amazon, like just did me dirty. And the thing that really bothers me is that now they've given me a updated delivery date saying it'll be delivered between December 19th and January 12th. And it's like, I don't even want it if it's coming on January 12th. It's like, Amazon, you know very well that I'm trying to buy this for Christmas. <laughs> but it's like, they, they can't just tell me it's going to be delivered on, like, December 26th, because then they know I'll cancel my order out. Mm -hmm. They want to string me along with that, like, small 5% piece of hope that maybe it will really come on December 20th, and then it'll be like a Christmas miracle. So on December 26th, are you just going to tell them don't bother or? I'm going to probably evaluate the situation and try to figure out how hard it might be to get one of these items later because I might still go ahead and get it only because, I mean, if I'm not going to want it on December 26th, I really shouldn't get it at all, right? But also because... Um, you could get it for a birthday or Well, something. that's the thing I was going to say is that I might still get it because it could be for, like, Easter or something. The only thing is, like, that's so far away that I could just, like, rebuy it at the time. Mm -hmm. So that's why I might just sort of assess, like, do I think this is going to be available? Like, how hard is this going to be to get later? If mm -hmm. I think it's going to be easy to buy post-Christmas, I might just, like, let it go and try to get it again later. I feel like some of those hot toys become available. They often become available. Like, I, think, I feel like by Easter I might be able like to the get Furbies. it. Furbies. Yes, like... Furbies people were going crazy for, and now it's like I can't go to a store without seeing the Furbies, you know? Like, I mean, you available. mean, I mean, I think the new Furby is the Hatchimal, right? The Hatchimal, right. But yeah, like, yeah, no, it's kind of like the Hatchimal. I think this this item is very much a Hatchimal. Mm -hmm. It's very much like a Hatchimal. So I feel like I might be able to get it for, like, half price if I just... But I, but with Amazon, since I, I try to only buy things from Amazon that are actually sold by Amazon, so if I do go ahead and order keep the order i could just return this mm -hmm. when i find the cheaper one as long as i find it by like january something or, third or whatever so i may i don't know i'm gonna see what happens but yeah i kind of just want it for christmas or i mean i'm just gonna like let it let it go until maybe a birthday but even then maybe not because for birthdays i try to stick with more like solid toys i feel like christmas is the time to get just like one or two like really ridiculous items <laughs> well it's kind of like in the nutcracker you know how like the, like, Uncle Godfather Drosselmeyer or whatever shows up and he has all the weird animatronic toys, including, you know, the Nutcracker and the mm -hmm. Ten Soldiers and all those. It's like, I like to have, like, a few items that are the equivalent of those mm -hmm. for the, for Christmas. But the rest of the time I try to be very, very reasonable about what I'm shopping for. But that leads into what we were talking about next, in that you like to really strategically plan the list 
the whole set of gifts. I do. I mean, because I, I think about Christmas in a way, like shopping for our kids especially, as... Well, it's really lucky for us, I think, too, because all of, like, our family, like, you know, just immediate family within our home birthdays are really happening in the late spring to early summer, kind mm -hmm. of, like, end of April through mid-July. So Christmas hits about half way between, you know, birthdays and, like, you know, the other side of the year is where we get Christmas. Mm -hmm. So it really is a really nice kind of time to kind of reload as far as like the stuff we want our kids to have to play with and i also i really do like to go big for christmas and like and birthdays and easter but other than those specific times when i like to really like do it up i try not to do a lot of like we don't really buy our kids like very many like random toys or anything mm -hmm. like you know maybe like a knickknack or every once in a while or like a book or something but like we don't ever just buy like a big toy mm -hmm. for like no reason. So I'm really looking at it as like Christmas is like the big kind of time to get things that we want them to have. I mean, maybe for more than the year. Cause I mean, I'm hoping that some toys, you know, definitely people use for more than a year, but definitely for like the whole next year, I'm thinking of these are like the main items that I imagine they're going to be playing with. And maybe they'll get like a few supplementary things for their birthday. But like, these are like the main things I imagine them having for like the whole year Mm -hmm. So I really try to, like, hit kind of different categories of, like, the type of stuff we want them to have. Mm -hmm. And I do spread that out a little bit, though, between, like, the stuff that we're getting them and then as far as, like, what I ask. Like, because we do have a few family members that buy some stuff for them and they, like, ask for suggestions. And so I also kind of what suggestions I give to family members and then the stuff that we're definitely going to get. Mm -hmm. I do try to make sure I'm hitting, like, the certain areas for them to, like, feel like they have, like, a well-rounded collection of play things. So, I mean, if, you know, like, if you kind of go with, like, what Mr. Rogers said about, like, play being, like, the work of childhood, then, you know, the toys are their tools. Mm -hmm. So, and I want them to have, like, the best tools to, like, you know, make the most of things. Yeah. I think that's a good way to go about it. I think that it's important for children to have those kind of things around that allow them to not just be fed things, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, but to actually have to do the constru constructive play, I guess you'd call it. Yes. Well, that's, that's kind of, I mean, I think, I think what you're, you're hitting on is like the principle that like you want your kids to have to play with the toys. You don't want the toys to do the playing for them. Yeah. And so that's kind of the opposite of like what we were saying with like the couple of like flashy, like, mm -hmm. you know, all the bells and whistles, like, just, like, ooh, the ooh and ah opening, the unveiling thing. Like, I like to have a couple things like that just for, like, the amusement of the moment. But, like, mostly we do like those things that, like, they're really yeah. doing the playing. Like the scarves. <laughs> <laughs> and the magnetiles and, like, the, you know, the play foods, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. One thing that I've really been glad that we've done this year is the advent calendars, though. The advent calendars have been really enjoyable. We're doing... Two, well, two different really things in that both of the big kids have the toy advent calendar. So that's like a pre-made advent calendar, which I'm glad I did this year because last year I tried to sort of cobble together a toy advent calendar. And this is easier and probably better. And then we also have an advent calendar that's just kind of like that a metal house. And it's divided into little sections. You know, each one is numbered. And so every day I put a note in that says like what... Christmasy activity we're doing, which that's more of what I actually like have really been like wanting to and enjoying to do. It's just, it's something I wanted to do last year. And we had like a little, like Eli like was such a newborn that I just, I knew I didn't have it in me. Mm -hmm. And you know, just to actually know that I could actually do the Christmasy activities. Cause sometimes with a baby that small, it's just like, you know, survival mode and not not knowing if you can carve out the time to actually like make the gingerbread scented play-doh or whatever so this year i'm really enjoying that i'm doing more of those things that i really want to do like i've managed to do something Christmassy every day you know just mm -hmm. you know little things like like making the gingerbread scented play-doh that's something that's coming up but like you know having like a christmas movie night making a special snack um learning how to draw like a christmas gnome getting to eat like three like Christmas candy, like little Christmas candy pieces, you know, just little things like that. But I think it's really fun to do like 
activities because that's something that I'm really really interested in doing too not just because it's fun for the kids but also things that it's like really like activities that the family can enjoy doing together and remember and that kind of helps to build like our relationships too as we're also enjoying ourselves because mm -hmm. I think that's something that we've been more int more and more intentional about like with doing like you know movie night every Friday and like things like that where it's like little family traditions that kids can look forward to and mm -hmm. so just doing the advent calendars along with that but the kids also are really enjoying the toy advent calendars too because this year we did um a lego one for our oldest and mm -hmm. that's just exactly exactly right for him mm -hmm. like, i feel like that's been such a big hit like every day like he's like racing out of bed excited to do that mm -hmm. i also got that sort of supplement going back to what we were saying about like the really curated list of like what gifts to get them like his I knew that he would be kind of bummed because we didn't actually get him any um, Star Wars Legos for, like, any of his, like, Christmas, like, under the tree gifts. Mm -hmm. And I knew he really wanted a specific, some specific Lego characters. And so when I saw that there was an advent calendar that had specifically the characters he wanted and in that theme that he wasn't getting elsewhere, I was like, all right, he really needs to have this. Mm -hmm. And then for our four-year-old... There's a Minnie Mouse one, which I think is, I think she's really, really enjoying it. It doesn't provide quite as much play value as the Lego one, just because, I mean, she's really excited to get Minnie Mouse's various fashions, because it's just, you know, you have the Minnie Mouse, and then she gets, like, a new purse or, like, sunglasses or something every day. So it's exciting, but then, I mean, once Minnie Mouse is wearing the new item, there's not, like, much for her to do, since there's not other characters or things, something to build the way there is with the Legos. Mm -hmm. But I still think it's really enjoyable, and I'm really happy with the quality of the Minnie Mouse doll. Because I've been eyeing those sort of... It's like a Barbie doll, but of Minnie Mouse. And I just... I, like, gasped when I saw it because it was, like, so delightful to me. So I'm happy to have that yeah. in, in the home. For Emerald accessory versions. Exactly. Like, it is really good for her because she does love things that have accessories. So yeah. something where she gets to acquire more and more accessories every day, I think it really is right for her. Every morning she's like, look, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> she always wants to show remember, me what the latest. Remember how excited she was to tell you about when she discovered that Minnie Mouse had sunglasses? Oh, yeah. Because she knows you like to wear sunglasses, so I, I think do. she thought you'd appreciate that more than some of the hair bows and purses and things. She knows that you don't personally have any of those. Yeah. So then, like, when Minnie Mouse had something that, like you have, I think she really thought you could, like, appreciate it finally. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited about your YouTube videos. Yes. Um... I've been really struggling though, like I haven't put out very many videos lately and this is the season that I really look forward to doing videos in the most and I have a couple that I'm determined to get up before Christmas. The ma Mainly I'm determined to do the um, video which is just what I got my kids for Christmas. Because that's honestly my favorite, my very favorite video to watch of, you know, of other people, the people I follow and also that's a video that I will search for and watch people that I don't normally follow. I just really, really enjoy those videos. And I also really enjoy making them and look forward to making them. I like, it's for me, it's entertainment just to see. I like seeing how other people's families work and what other people do. I also like getting ideas for, you know, because I have found some like good gifts that I wouldn't have, you know, thought of or known about or whatever. And, mm -hmm. you know, ideas in that front. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. I've just been struggling because it's obviously a video that I need to film when the children can't hear me mm -hmm. and it's really hard to find a time when they're like actually asleep but I'm not like feeding the baby and I mean obviously it's pitch dark outside so there's like lighting issues so you know it, it just feels like it feels like a, it feels like this year it's been harder than ever to try to figure out how to do it and I've actually tried to film it a couple times and like for various reasons my footage has had to be destroyed so <laughs> Well, just, you know, there's either somebody starts crying suddenly in the background and it's like I tried to go on, but I should have just stopped filming because I'm not going to put out a video where there's like someone wailing in the background or just like by the time I was able to start filming and I'm so frazzled that it's like when I look at myself in the video, it's just like my hair looks weird and like the lighting is poor. And, like I just, I don't know. I'm hoping that tomorrow it's going to be miraculously not storming and maybe you can take the kids outside during the day. And then I could actually have, like, some decent lighting and, like, not worry about... Because even when the kids are asleep and I've been trying to film the video, i am still been, like, finding myself whispering when I'm trying to talk about, like, the most exciting items. Because there's some things that I just really want them to be surprised by. Mm -hmm. But I'm determined to get this up 
I'm ideally next week, but like before Christmas, it's going to be up. So definitely whoever's listening to this podcast should definitely look for my channel. I have previous year's videos on there that are already available that you and can watch. your previous videos have like thousands of They're views, the most popular videos so. that I do every year. That's another reason I want to do it because it's not just like I enjoy making it, but it's also fulfilling to make something that other you people obviously hits. enjoy as well. Yeah. So definitely, you know, those are there and this will be, my video from this year will be up eventually too. So I definitely think people should check that out. Ash Burgess on, yeah, it's, it's on just, YouTube? Yeah, it's just my name. So like it's like easy and to subscribe? Find. Definitely like and subscribe. Yeah, definitely. But we've been watching videos on YouTube with the kids of Vlogmica. Yes, well that was something fun that we've done this year. Not Christmas related, but holiday related. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, let me just like kind of preface this by saying like, I'm totally aware that Hanukkah is not the Jewish version of Christmas. They're like completely separate holidays that just like happen to happen in like close together within the year. Mm -hmm. And I realized that Christmas is also like a major holiday, whereas I think for Jewish people, Hanukkah is considered more of a minor holiday. Mm -hmm. Although obviously, you know, different Jewish people are, you know, obviously able to decide, you know, if they want to make more or less of it. Because, well, for example, the vlog, in, in one of the vlog videos that I was watching, um, the woman was talking actually about this and saying, like, even though it is technically a minor holiday, she feels like it's okay for her to make it kind of into a big deal because one of the things that she believes is that you're allowed to have your Judaism bring as much joy and be as, jo as joyful for you as you would like. And so for her, it's very joyful to make Hanukkah a big deal. And so she finds that to be okay, even though it is technically, like, kind of more of a minor holiday. Mm -hmm. But it is, you know, I do consider it as one of the holidays in the holiday season, obviously, because it ha is happening now. And the kids have been interested in it. And so when I saw that somebody that I follow on YouTube was doing a vlog, like a kind of, like, I've watched a lot of videos before, and I've even done before videos where it's, like, the Christmas... Um, videos mm -hmm. where like you do videos you know every every day in december or something like that part of like vlogmas but so this this woman obviously doesn't celebrate christmas she celebrates jewish holidays and so she was doing vlogmica and I, sadly it's over now because i mean hanukkah has already passed mm -hmm. but it was really fun to watch i think it was really great for the kids because it's one thing to talk about or read about holidays that other families celebrate that we don't personally celebrate and I think sometimes that's hard for them to fully envision but for them to actually see videos of a family that includes features that are very familiar to them because this is a family with three young children and we're a family with three young children mm -hmm. so to see like a family with three young children celebrating the holiday I think was really able to like they were really able to feel like they got I think a better idea of it than just reading a book about a family or something mm -hmm. where it's like a, you know, watercolor illustration. It's different just to like see a video of kids that they can really <clears throat> identify with, mm -hmm. you know, opening presents and lighting the candles and singing and all that, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's been really fun. I've enjoyed that very much. I've learned some things about Hanukkah too. Also in that, uh, uh Christmas. Oh Monica yeah. No, I also, I also <laughs> watched a like, Fairly regrettable holiday movie. <laughs> I think because I was kind what of... What was feeling, the name of it again? I'm trying to remember. It was like something in Men Mistletoe and Menorahs or Menorahs and Mistletoe. Okay. So, kind of in the spirit of watching Vlogmica. Mm -hmm. In the spirit of watching Vlogmica, I happened to see that there was a like cheesy, you know, Hallmarky style. I don't know if it originally was like a Netflix original or a something original or where it came from, but anyway, it was available to stream holiday movie, ro obviously a romance called like Mistletoe and Menorahs, or maybe it was Menorahs and Mistletoe. Either way, you, I think that the I think the title, whether whichever one it was, I think gives a good idea. Mistletoe and Menorahs, twenty nineteen romantic comedy. Okay, and I find it to be though. A very disappointingly unnecessary <laughs> film. The plot was very thin. Okay, so here's my problem with the plot. <laughs> right, the whole premise is that there's a woman who, of course, she works for like a toy company to mm -hmm. like vaguely throw it on back to like Santa Claus or whatever, but. Also, the art she's in her a, <laughs> she's, she's like a Christian woman 
and she's like super into celebrating Christmas. Like she has a super cute advent calendar that she like is put together apparently for herself. And like every morning she like pulls out the chocolate and like reads the note about like her Christmasy activities that she's like obviously pre-stuffed in there. Which I mean, that was super cute. But the unnecessary part is that the whole movie is about how she is invited to a potential client's holiday party. And then she finds, and she kind of brags to the client about how she's like super into it. And they tell her that she could have a special role in orchestrating the festivities. But then later she founds, finds out that the client is Jewish. So then it's going to be a Hanukkah party. And so instead of just coming clean and being like, I'm super excited to come to your Hanukkah party and learn more about the holiday that I've never celebrated before or whatever. Instead, she decides that she must quickly learn about Hanukkah so that she can continue this elaborate ruse that she's in fact like a very like into her Judaism Jew and then somehow take part in the Hanukkah festivities at the party, which, okay, there, there's, a, there's some problems with that in just in the sense that like, I mean, who is this bizarre client that's like, not only is it like, as I, like, I understand the idea of, like, as kind of a part of your, like, trying to get the job, you have to come to the party and, like, impress people, because that's, like, normal. But the idea that you now have to take part in, like, the religious ceremony, even and, if you were of that was religion, another, it's weird. And there was another client, or another potential... Yeah, so it's like Competing who will light the candles on the menorah? And it's like, like wow, that kind of seems like it kills kind of the real the holiday spirit. Like, who is this awful like potential client? So that's weird. But the real unnecessary part is the fact. Okay, so she ends up getting kind of paired up with a Jewish person that one of her friends knows, who of course is kind of like a semi-attractive man, who is dating a Christian woman and her family is coming to visit for the holidays. So he wants to learn how to like do Christmas to impress her family. And the problem here is that first of all, <laughs> the premise of the movie is that somehow neither this Christian woman nor this Jewish man feel able to celebrate the other holiday without taking lessons. Mm hmm. And I can kind of buy it maybe from the perspective of the Christian woman who wants to learn about how to celebrate Hanukkah in the sense that there are some specific things that if you've not really been around the celebration, maybe you wouldn't know how to do. Like, what is the proper way to put the menorah together as far as, like, when do you, you know, light the candles? In what order? How, how do you, like, sing the prayer as you're lighting the candles? Those kind of things. I can understand maybe wanting some specific directions about that. If you're, like, intent on weirdly impersonating someone that's, you know, rather than just coming clean about the fact that it's not you. So I can kind of buy that. But, like, I don't buy that a Jewish person living in America and, like, this wasn't, like, an Orthodox Jew or something. This was, like, a very mainstream kind mm -hmm. of Jewish man. Like, this guy has, like, not only has he had probably friends and co-workers that were Christians, but also he's, like, seen, like, movies and TV shows. Like, he does not need lessons from this Christian woman on things like how to select and decorate a Christmas tree. How to wrap presents. People also wrap Hanukkah presents. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so, like, I don't, I don't think he needs lessons on that. I think that even if you've never personally selected and decorated a Christmas tree, I think you could figure out how to do that without someone instructing you in a instructional flirtation instructing thing. Mm -hmm. Um, how to attend a holiday market and like purchase some gingerbread from like a whimsical stall, like things like this that no one needs lessons on these things. Also, spoiler alert about. Two thirds of the way through the movie, his Christian fiance or whatever dumps him, and eliminating the need for him to learn any more <laughs> yes. about the Christmas season, still like goes to her well. parents' house and like participates in the like you know what I mean like it's like we've totally dropped the premise on his end of why he even needs to like <laughs> like it 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 it's just so unnecessary yes it's so a, unnecessary it's a very thin plot. And, and they also, they never address any of the real meaty issues that, like, could have existed in this. Like, for example, like, 
No Jewish person needs lessons on how to celebrate Christmas if they are, like, <clears throat> determined to do so. Also, if you're actually a Jewish person, but you're dating a Christian and their family is coming for Christmas, couldn't you just be like, I'm so excited to participate in this Christmas celebration with you for the first time? Mm -hmm. Do you really need to pretend like somehow you know how to celebrate Christmas? Like, they know you're a Jew. And if they don't, and if you're actually pretending not to be, that's kind of wrong that's, and weird. That's a problem, too. Like, yeah. either it's problematic because you're actually pretending not to be Jewish, although I don't think this guy could pretend because he looked, like, super Jewish. Yes. But it's weird if you're pretending not to be Jewish. It's also weird if you're openly admitting that you're Jewish, but somehow you're determined to prove that you can celebrate this holiday. Why not just be like, I'm super up for, like, decorating the tree with you and, like, eating the gingerbread? Like, I think that that would be enough for, like, a reasonable family <laughs> of, like, other people, right? Well, it's kind of harkens back to a subject you find preposterous about old-timey movie plots where it's like there's a simple misunderstanding that could be cleared up very easily that is the driver of the entire plot. Well, okay, the misunderstanding is, of course, here the fact that she's invited to this Hanukkah party under the guise, under the misunderstanding that she is Jewish. She could clearly have cleared that up by just being like, I'm actually not Jewish and I'm so honored and excited to come to your party anyway. And I think everyone would have been fine with that. And yes. she could have just continued on. But the but, but she on doesn't his, do that. <laughs> no, she doesn't do that. But on his part, it's not even a misunderstanding. It's not mm -hmm. like his girlfriend or fiance or whatever's family thinks that he's Christian and he's trying to pretend that he is, which would be super weird, like we already said. It's the fact that what what bothers me is that like they all know that he's Jewish, but somehow he still needs to take lessons on how to like celebrate Christmas the most. Like, that, mm -hmm. that just doesn't make sense at all. No. But it also, going back to what I was saying about how it misses an opportunity to explore meteor real issues. So, of course, by the end of the movie, you know, spoiler alert again, of course, they end up together. The woman taking the Hanukkah lessons and the man taking the Christmas mm -hmm. lessons end up, like, they realize that they should, like, be in a relationship. It never addresses anything about how is this going to work as far as, like, the interfaith relationship, mm -hmm. which is a real issue. And I'm not saying that it can't work, but I am saying it's a real issue that would need to be, you know, tussled with and that could cause some actual issues. Mm -hmm. Like, is he a man who apparently cares about his Judaism, although not enough to stop him from taking weird celebrating of Christmas lessons? <laughs> is he okay with being with a Christian woman and how that might affect his future family. Mm -hmm. Is she a Christian woman who apparently is very into her Christianity and her Christmasiness, okay with being with a Jewish man and how that might affect the future family that they build together? Are they going to have an interfaith family with children who celebrate both Jewish holidays and Christian holidays and what kind of identity do they hope for their children to have? Is he hoping that she could convert to Judaism? And then if she converts to Judaism, does she have to stop celebrating Christmas? Mm -hmm. Like cause Christmas seems to mean a lot to her, yes. but like if she converts to Judaism, mm -hmm. I think she could still celebrate Christmas with her family, but still, you know, in the home, I think they would probably need to not, I mean, I, I don't know. I think every family, every conversion situation needs to decide that for themselves. But I'm just saying, like, she seemed pretty into mm -hmm. Christmas. He seemed pretty into being a Jew and, as part of his identity. He did buy a Christmas tree, though. He did buy a Christmas tree, but he did put blue lights on it and, like, a weird Star of David Christmas tree topper <laughs> that I'm not sure where he found. But, I mean, also his grandmother did own, like, a Judaica, like, shopping store. Yes. So I'm just saying, given that his grandmother owns like a Judaica store and that apparently being a Jewish is supposed to be a prominent feature of who he is, is he okay with the fact that if he stays with this woman that he's now dating and she doesn't convert to Judaism, that would change what kind of relationship their future children have with Judaism? They're definitely going to have children because a big plot point was that his original girlfriend or fiance or whatever didn't want children mm -hmm. and he was like going to be willing to compromise even though he loves kids but obviously he should be with this other woman who totally wants to have kids with him mm -hmm. but like are they going to have jewish kids 
and like, you know what I'm saying? Those are real meaty issues that could make for an actual interesting film mm -hmm. to see how they work that out. But that totally does not happen. Instead, it's just this completely ridiculous thing. I still had fun watching it. Oh, I had a lot of fun watching it. But, I mean, that's why we watch these kind of movies. Because we want to enjoy watching them. And I feel like they've really ridiculous. ramped up this entire genre, too. I just think that they've realized that there's an insatiable hunger for these kind of movies. Yes. I mean, I have seen A Christmas Prince and, like, A Christmas Prince, The Royal Wedding, and A Christmas Prince, The Royal Baby. I'm expecting keep, another installment to arrive on Netflix anytime. They keep going. Um, but speaking of trees, we have a uh, artificial tree, surprisingly. Which this is year. something I think we have railed against, possibly even on the podcast. Oh, yes. Honest. I think we even went hard on this in a previous episode. Now, to be fair, we did kind of get maneuvered into this because there were a lot of factors that led to the artificial tree. It was, you know, our, our community is kind of frowning upon real trees. We got an unpleasant note one year after I dragged our Christmas tree to Just the dumpster because... after the needles left a trail from the <laughs> dumpster to our Not house. Not only that, but I think the whole community said like, no real trees. I think there may have been a few unfortunate fires. So yeah, there's that. And then on top of which, last year, um... Being, it was harder to like think about even getting out. Like we were, like you know, because yeah. usually, because usually for us, getting the live tree wasn't just about having it. It was about the experience of going to get it. Mm -hmm. And last year, we weren't going to go out to get it with the kids and everything, yeah. so we weren't going to have that experience anyway. Last year, just trying to obtain anything felt like such a struggle. Yeah, that it was just kind of like easier, also just to like give in to the rules of the place and just be like, okay, we're getting the fake tree. Yes. But honestly, you know, I have made the best of it in a lot of ways. Like, I found a lot of things that I like about this fake tree. It's a pre-lighted, flocked... It looks nice. I've always kind of wanted a flocked tree. Mm -hmm. I know you can flock a real tree, too, but I mean, this is, like, just already good to go. And I like the pre-litness. Yeah. I like the flocking. It looks good. It does. And it was nice not to have to factor in buying an entire Christmas tree into a budget. Like, I mean, I didn't buy it this year, but... When I bought it, it wasn't that expensive. Yeah, like we didn't. It was about didn't, as much as you get would. One of, one of, yeah, it was about as much as we would have paid for yeah. a live one. But I feel like the live one is like just costly enough that every year it does feel like kind of a big hit in the Christmas budget. Well, you're already buying presents and yeah, food yeah. And so it's like another expensive like, thing you got to put on there. Whereas yeah. this felt like a really nice like just this year to be like, oh yeah, we just already just have pull it that. out. Yeah, I can totally see why people <laughs> have done this in the past. Definitely. Definitely. <clears throat> and, I mean, I do have to say that I think I might be mildly allergic to pine trees. Yeah. Because, I mean, they always just like the live Christmas tree. I love the way it smells, and I do miss that smell. But it does always kind of bother my throat and make me kind of itch and sneeze and, like, cough. Yeah. And, like, there's... And this year, it's kind of been nice to not have that experience. Also, Spike drinks the water and then pees yes. everywhere. Yeah, I'm really... Oh, my gosh. I don't miss... No. I don't miss trying to shoo the animals away from the base of the tree because they're trying to climb it. They're trying to drink the water. They're all over it. It's also worrying about it leaking and getting on the presents and just like, it's kind of nice that it's just like dry. <laughs> it's like having another pet. Yeah, but this <laughs> is so simple. Like, I just feel like I think we're in a, I'm not saying that we'll never have another live no, tree, but we we're in a can... season of our life where having this fake tree is much easier. Well, I think having small children too is yes. a big thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, we haven't even managed to put an ornaments on it, but at least it looks good because it well, has it the flocking and the lights. The yeah. I just, well, first of all, I want to have putting the ornaments be maybe one of our advent calendar activities. Mm -hmm. But also, I've already been down the road of trying to keep toddlers off of a Christmas tree when, I mean, toddlers just, I mean, first of all, they see you putting the ornaments on. Oh, man. And, they, and you know how they want to copy everything you do. Mm -hmm. Additionally, it just looks exciting and interesting, and it's like, why wouldn't they want to grab at them? Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's any way we're going to keep... I mean, we have an 18-month-old. Mm -hmm. There's no way we're going to keep her from just... She's going to be all over the tree. So I almost think we're going to have to wait till Christmas Eve to decorate it. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to another thing we wanted to talk about, which is, does Santa decorate the Christmas tree? I never heard of that before, before you mentioned it. Okay, so... Um, one of my parents, when they were growing up, said that Santa decorated the tree. Like, they would go to bed on 
Christmas Eve, and then when they would wake up in the in the morning, Santa would have put all their family's ornaments and everything out on the tree. Mm -hmm. And that was just like their tradition, I guess. And now, though, that I'm rethinking it, I've kind of started to wonder, was that really like their family's tradition, or was it just something that their parents started similar to us because it was like they probably had young children and they were like, how are we going to get this tree to just, you know, stay decorated? Why don't we just do it at the last minute? Mm -hmm. Although I feel like back then children were made to behave better. Like, I feel like if it was like 1953, I feel like we would have decorated the tree by now and we'd be like, look, you kids better like keep your paws off of it or something. Yeah, but back then, like your neighbors could like beat your kids and it was <laughs> true, okay. So true. it's like not, not the same time period. <laughs> true. So yeah, I, I don't know. But, <laughs> but still, I'm saying like, I've never heard anybody else say that Santa decorated the tree before. I've always thought that was interesting. So like very interesting. And my, and my parents obviously didn't carry that on. But it was just interesting that I, that's apparently that's something a, that someone has thought of. Yeah, something. that wasn't a tradition I was familiar with before. Yeah. I totally understand how they got there. Are there any other traditions that you, as like, that your family did, like, when you were a kid, like, Christmas traditions that you think are, like, odd or that you either did or didn't carry on or, like, want to carry on? Um, One that I always liked as a kid was opening one present on Christmas Eve from under the tree. You've worn me down over that, on that, over the years. Like, I'm not I'm, trying to wear anyone down. No, no, I, I mean, wearing down isn't always bad. I don't mean wearing down like I'm tired and sad and, like, a nub of my former self. I just mean, like, <laughs> you know? How fortunate. No, I just mean, like, I think when you originally maybe mentioned that we could do that, I kind of chafed at it a little bit. But over time, I've kind of come around to it because I, I do kind of go for the, you know, whatever we can do to increase the joyfulness. And so if that brings more excitement... I, I, would, I found it extremely exciting when I was a kid. Like, it yeah. Was... And so I think we're, we've kind of, we kind of have low key started doing that in that we've started doing like, we do a new ornament every year and we've done like opening the ornaments. Mm -hmm. This year I might try to do that up even bigger because I mean, I have ornaments, but we also, we have pajamas mm -hmm. and we've never done like the full on, like I know some families do full on matching pajamas. Mm -hmm. And we've never quite reached that level, but I do always get the kids new pajamas like sometime in the month. And last year I also got some for us. Mm -hmm. And then this year I've also gotten pajamas for all of us. They don't totally match, but some of them match and like, like some of them match with each other and they're kind of coordinating. But anyway, normally I would have already given out the pajamas. Like, maybe on, like, December 1st or something, but I've held it back. So I don't know if I want to give the pajamas, like, sometime in the next couple of weeks, or I might just include those as part of the Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. I know some people do a Christmas Eve box, mm -hmm. which I could easily do because in addition to always doing pajamas, I always get my kids... My kids. <laughs> I always get... Sorry, I forgot I was talking to you for a minute. Well, my kids. Yeah. No, I always get our kids new Christmas books, like either one book for them to all share or like one book each or something. But I have new Christmas books for them also that I've also not given them yet. So I might go for like what some people do is for Christmas Eve, they do the book, the pajamas, they'll do like hot cocoa or candy or like whatever. And like, I might package that all up to do for Christmas Eve. The reason I haven't done that previously is that, um, I always feel like, oh, but then you only get to enjoy that Christmas book in the pajamas that one day, and then they're, like, less Christmassy, like, for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I've started to think I might want to just try it this year and see how we feel about it. Because mm -hmm. it could be ultra exciting to get new pajamas on Christmas Eve. So I don't know. What do you think? Should we wait till Christmas Eve, or should we do it, like, a few days before? Like, we could do it for, like, solstice or something. I don't know. They wear their Christmas pajamas all year anyway so I don't feel like it really matters to like get them that far before Christmas right I mean yeah that's true and like we keep the Christmas books out for at least a few oh, yeah. I think at least through January oh, we easily, keep the Christmas yeah. because I do that is one thing I have done already is I always towards the beginning of December unpack all of our Christmas books because I do collect holiday books for the kids and I keep them packed away during a lot of the year and then I brought them out like a couple like Mm -hmm. You know, maybe like December 2nd, I think I brought them all out. Yes. And then I'll pack them back up probably sometime before Valentine's Day. But I do feel like that helps keep them 
fresh. Everyone's so excited to see those books again. Mm-hmm. It's always good. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, I may, I might just, yeah, let them have those books for Christmas Eve, and that'll be, like, ultra exciting. Unless there's some other gift that we want to give them more. Because we'll just have to think, like, what is the right present for them, like, to have, like, right then. Mm-hmm. Should we talk about Christmas traditions that we, like, are definitely not doing? Yeah. Because I can think of two huge ones. Yeah. Well, obviously, there's Santa. Mm. So you grew up with Santa coming to your home in Blumen Gardens. <clears throat> yes. Um... <laughs> so my mom says now that whenever I would ask about Santa, she said she would say, "What do you think?" Mm-hmm. And that is true. Mm-hmm. She, if I directly asked, she would kind of turn it back around. And if like you that. were like, "Mommy, is Santa real?" Yeah, she would she be like, "What do you think, Robbie?" Day to day, Santa was definitely real. So you think that, like, if you directly asked, like, if I got wise and but she definitely put like, it straight to her, she wouldn't lie. She definitely... would definitely be like, you know, turn it back around and be like, well, you know, what do you think? And, you know, obviously as I got older, it got harder and harder. And then I had a little brother, so she didn't want me to spoil it for him and stuff. But but, but day-to-day Christmas season, yes, Santa was okay. a thing. Because, yeah, we I, mean, I definitely see get Santa. the, yeah, yeah. I definitely Santa get the, the sense gifts. that yeah, she's, it, like, maybe, like, low-key horrified that, like, her kids don't, like, believe in Santa. <laughs> Probably, sure. Um... But yes, no, Santa, like, the gist of it is that Santa was, like, a thing. Yeah, whereas whereas in my family, it was always very, my parents, like, they weren't, like, against Santa. Like, I know some families don't celebrate Santa, and you're not even allowed to, like, have a good time about it. And in my family, like, we were still allowed to read books, like, the night, you know, we were still allowed to, like, read the night before Christmas and watch, like, Christmas movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, like... My parents were always very clear about the fact that Santa was pretend and, like, that they were the ones getting the presents for us. Mm. And we've kind of decided to go in that in that route. I just feel like, you know, we, we put so much time and effort and money into getting them nice stuff. It's like, why at why the last minute transfer the credit to some Santa? some fictional character yeah. all the credit, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, no, I get that. And for me, it's more just, like, it's an... It's, a, it's in the spirit of fun and honesty. Because I think that... For me, like, I think sometimes when I when I say, like, oh, we didn't even do Santa growing up, people think, like, oh, that's so sad, you missed out on so much fun. And I don't feel that way at all. Because I feel like it's actually more fun for me because I never... Christmas never lost the sparkle for me the way that I think it sometimes does for people when they have the, like... When the scales sad, fall from your yeah. eyes and it's all, like, an illusion and things come crashing down. That is a, That is a hard moment if... You've been playing it hard up to that point. Yeah, and I never had to have that disappointment of being like... Well, then you thinking, start questioning everything. It's like, Well, that's, <laughs> that's the other thing, too, is that I try to really emphasize with the kids that, like, I try to be really honest with them. I mean, obviously, there are some things that aren't really age-appropriate, so I try to, you know, not... I try to either talk about certain things in an age-appropriate way or avoid them for now, but overarchingly, I try to be really honest with our kids because I want them to know that I will tell them things that, to the best of my knowledge, are true. And I feel like that trust is a little bit eroded if they find out that I've, like, put a lot of energy into building, like, an elaborate lie Mm -hmm. about, like, a fictional character just for fun. Yeah. Because it's one thing if they find out that I lied about something where it was, like, some real terrible thing that they didn't need to know about, so I, like, avoided telling them about it until they were old enough to know. But, like, why should I lie about something for fun? Like, to me, that doesn't doesn't hit me right. However, mm-hmm. we say all this, and I agree, obviously, because we're doing it that way. But I feel like our kids want to do this. Like, even tonight. Yes, our kids do want to believe in Santa. But I think that's partially just... Like, I, the, I they, know, that way too, they hear though. what we're saying. I was, they, yeah, I was that understand. way too, though. <laughs> or, like, okay, for example, my friend Jamil and I were talking about this. And she told me that, like... Even though, like, she believed in Santa, like, a little bit. Like, I don't think her parents pushed it super hard, but it was definitely, Mm -hmm. like, the cultural norm kind of level of, like, Santa. Yeah, it's it's a real thing in her family. And then, like, she said that, though, that, like, she still wanted to believe it so badly that, like, one time when she was, like, 11, and this was, like, years past the point of, like, believing in Santa, Mm -hmm. as she had once as, like, a small child, she still... 
like wanted to believe it so badly that she like almost had like a delusional experience where like she thought that she saw Santa like running around the side of the house like zipping like on Christmas Eve like she thought she caught a glance of Santa and so I and and it's not like she's like a delusional person or anything. Yeah, I my think brother it's just swore like, up and down who saw the Easter Bunny once. So. Exactly, and it's like not even like the child is a delusional like person or that they're like lying. It's just like sometimes you just want just to into get into something so much. That, you're so yeah. excited. You're so into it you're just mm-hmm. it, it, it's just you're vibing so hard that like mm-hmm. it's happening for you and i think that's going to happen whether or not the parents push it because like like you were saying our kids still want to like like you know what i mean like they're like they know that it's mommy and daddy but also maybe santa will just kind of like swing by and drop some extra or we're listening to santa songs and santa movies and you know yeah I mean? and it is it's... a little bit confusing because like the culture pushes it so hard. It does, yeah. It's it's hard to get away from. But that's something that I do have some things to say about on like a less festive note. In some ways, <laughs> that sounds really harsh, but like well, bring it down. <laughs> no, I just mean that. Okay, my viewpoint on like my obligation to society has like shifted in the sense that going into it, I kind of felt like okay. We're not doing Santa with our kids, but I felt a little bit worried about, you know, we don't want to ruin anything for anyone else. And I remember as a, like when I was a kid, not, you know, with a family that didn't do Santa, my parents were always really careful to be really, really to talk with us and emphasize that we should never ruin it for someone else because other people care about this and you should never, you know, talk about Santa with other kids or if you, if it comes up, don't ever like let on that you think that Santa is not like a thing because you don't want to ruin anything for anybody. Like my parents always kind of pushed that like, don't ruin it for other people. Even if you have to kind of like pretend and like play along about Santa, like it's for the other kids, like don't like get suspicious you know what i mean like it was kind of and i kind of went into it kind of with that viewpoint of like oh we have to always remind our kids not to like say anything about it to other kids because we don't want to like ruin it for anybody else and i still am not interested in hurting anyone else Mm -hmm. by like ruining things for them you know unnecessarily however i'm also less concerned about it in the sense that i've come to feel like just because society has like decided to collectively like push this like illusion doesn't mean that I'm obligated to like worry about like by uh, worry about it like just because you've decided to like weave this like elaborate illusion for your kids about Santa and that you like want them to believe and push it and push it and push it I am not obligated to like help you maintain that like, I'm not going to go out of my way to hurt anybody, and I hope that, like, my kids don't, like, ruin anything for anyone in a way that's, like, sad. But I'm also not going to, like, stress about it. Because, like, it's those people's choice to maintain an elaborate delusion or mm-hmm. illusion or whatever you want to call it. It's not my obligation just because I'm an outlier here to, like, help with that. If it was a religious belief yeah like i'm not saying that people should go yeah it's 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 not like i'm telling my kids that people should like go to a devout child and be like there is no god or something yeah that's different i i think that you should always be respectful of people's religious beliefs but that's more real in a way that santa is purely fictional (laughs) right exactly like yeah. whether or not you believe in someone's religious beliefs, like whether you not or not you believe in their god or any god, I think you can still respect the fact that that is real to them and their family. Mm-hmm. Whether or not someone wants their child to believe in Santa, it's not actually real to them and their family because they, the adult, know it's not true. They've just decided to try to paint this illusion. Mm-hmm. That's different. Yeah. And I just, I've alleviated myself of worrying about, like, other people's feelings in that realm. Like, I'm not actually, I probably haven't totally alleviated myself in the sense that I do not want to hurt anyone. I just also don't feel that sense of obligation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to tiptoe around it. Yeah, and on that note, let's talk about the other tradition that we will not ever be doing. Okay, there's a lot of things that annoy me about this tradition we're going to talk about, but... I think one of the main ones is that people act like it's been a tradition for 
time immemorial. This and was I definitely invented. Like, don't remember this. Sometime my in the entire last, childhood, like, and I felt years. like when I was like 23, everyone was like, "We are just doing this now." <laughs> which yeah, is it came out of nowhere and it hit so hard. Elf on the Shelf. Yeah. Okay. My biggest problem with Elf on the Shelf is that it's so much worse than Santa because. Like, part of what I don't like about Santa also that we didn't even touch on is, like, the whole, like, naughty or nice, and he knows when, if you're sleeping, he knows if you're awake, you better watch out. He's like, Santa's watching you. I don't like that. When we give our kids gifts, it is just out of an expression of joyfulness of the season and giving to them in celebration. It's not... We don't give them based on behavior. So... I don't like that aspect of Santa and Elf on the Shelf is even worse because I feel like Elf on the Shelf is just conditioning children to be spied on. It's like, it really probably just prepared everyone to like bring like Alexa and like all those things like into the home. Like exactly. Like I'm not going to like invite an elf to our house to like spy on us. Also, it sounds like so much work to create like a weird like scene every day when the elf is like gotten into. Although I have to say I actually do have a little bit of FOMO sometimes when I like see like people's like really cute like Instagram posts. Like I want to do that. Like I've kind of like I've even contemplated buying an elf just like for fun to like pose in like different ways. Because I do like like I want it to have like a little snowball fight with the marshmallow. It does. Cut to next year's podcast. (laughs) Ash is like well we brought the elf on the shelf into the home but only on a limited basis. (laughs) No, we really not, restricted it. No, we're not going to get the elf because I am absolutely against the... I'm ap, I'm against conditioning my children <laughs> to think it's okay for something to be, like, spying on them in their yeah. home and just, like, invite it in. Like, you should fight against that. Creepy. Don't just, like, invite it in. This is how people get slowly eroded. Yeah. I also just think it's creepy and... Also, in the same vein as Santa, the whole, like, it's going to be so disappointing when you find out that the elf wasn't really alive and it wasn't really moving around the house. Right. Like, that's not fun. Yeah, you're just creating more fictions for them to, like, be disillusioned by in the future. Yeah, but I do think, like, the actual, like, the little scenes and stuff could be fun. But also, you're right, a lot of work. Like, I don't want to have to do that every day. Mm-hmm. But that's not what's stopping me. If it was just about that, I would totally do it. <laughs> like, when I had time. Like, no, I... And people find elaborate ways to get around that, too. Fair enough. But one, uh, one tradition that... I don't think I ever really participated, even though we had an ornament of this. Is the pickle thing? What is what is the origin of it? Is I think it's maybe German. Okay, so my understanding is you hide the pickle somewhere on the Christmas. Is it an actual pickle? No, I think it's just a pickle ornament. I've only seen it as an ornament. I bet originally it it was a real pickle though. Although that's kind of weird. You know, it was like a real pickle. I like pickles, but I still don't want them. You still don't want to hide them anywhere on the tree? But my understanding is, like, whoever finds the pickle gets to open the first present. Hmm. But then I've seen people kind of taking it further where there's a special pickle gift. So it's not just like you get to open your one of your presents. It's there's a special gift for the person who gets the pickle. Mm-hmm. And then I've seen it taken even a step further where it's like a pickle, the pickle gift is like pickle themed. Mm. Like I watched a video recently where somebody had, I think it was like a game, like, you know, like past the pickles or I can't remember the exact title of the game, but that was going to be the pickle gift. So whoever finds the pickle gets to unwrap it and it's pickle themed, Mm -hmm. which I thought was really like taking it like to the next level. I do enjoy when people really like go hard with like stick to the thing you're doing. Mm Mm-hmm. But one more thing about Santa that we didn't talk about was um, when the gifts get put under the tree. Oh, yeah, because we were I was asking you, like, when you were a kid, when did the gifts go under the tree? So here's the thing. My dad's family lived in Michigan. And so for Thanksgiving, we would always travel to Michigan. And at that time, anyone who was in my extended family on his side who was going to give us a gift that's when we got it Mm -hmm. so we would take those gifts and obviously my mom's side they lived more out west and they would mail gifts to us and so gifts would be coming in pre-christmas from extended family Mm -hmm. those would go under the tree and those would kind of be what was sitting there and my parents, you know, they were like, don't look at them. But then again, if we looked at them, it's like, oh, you know, aunt so-and-so got us a sweater. It's not really the end of the world if we find that out. Christmas Eve, 
stocking gets filled. Wait, laid the, out. the stocking gets filled after you're asleep, right? After I'm asleep. So this is Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve children night, going to bed. after the kids have gone to bed, Santa, air quotes, mm -hmm. fills the stocking um, when you're the dog ate it. Separate story. But anyway. Chocolate uh, poisoning. Chocolate, yes. But fortunately, dog was ultimately okay. Dog was okay. Stocking, not so much. Yeah. Um, bigger gifts from parents slash Santa appear wrapped and unwrapped, depending on their wrappability. Um, I, I'm struggling to remember whether or not the wrapping paper was Santa themed. But mm -hmm. anyway, they would not be there mo for the most part. Like, there would be, I think there might have been a few gifts, like, from my parents mm -hmm. randomly under the tree. But, like, I'm, I'm talking so about, your like, parents the, would have more gifts from them. I'm talking about the big ticket okay. items. So, were the big ticket items from your parents or were they from Santa? I think they were from Santa. Mm -hmm. I think. Yes. So, those wouldn't appear until Christmas Eve night after I'd gone to bed. Like, if I was getting a bike, for example. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't just be like sitting under the tree. Sure. I mean, but also, but I mean, a bike is not a good example it, because you can't really. But wrap it is a good example well. because it's hard to wrap. Yes, it's hard to wrap. But I'm saying you might not wrap the bike more because it's hard to wrap, not just because there's a straight out rule. That okay, Santa but doesn't a bike wrap. level gift. Yes. Is not going under the tree pre. Yeah. Christmas Eve. No. So the socks are going under the tree. Yeah. But the like socks. The bicycle. The underwear. The, the Super Nintendo is going. Super to be Nintendo around. is going to be held back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. And I feel like my family was pretty similar. I mean, obviously, like we said, I we didn't do Santa, but it was still like things that we got like from relatives in the mail and stuff would go under the tree, and then all the gifts from my parents would appear. After the kids went to bed mm -hmm. Christmas Eve, they'd put all the gifts out. I just know that not every family does it that way because I know that some families, my impression is that all the gifts from the parents would go under the tree prior to Christmas Eve. Like in the weeks before Christmas, as the parents are shopping and wrapping, they would just get those presents wrapped in under the tree. And then only the presents from Santa are the ones that appear, I mm -hmm. think, on Christmas Eve. I also think that there are some traditions as far as wrapping. Like, I think for some people, Santa doesn't wrap anything. Mm. So, every, so like, all the wrapped presents are, like, waiting under the tree. And then on his Christmas Eve sleigh ride, Santa just drops off some unwrapped items. I think other people, Santa wraps things or some things, but Santa has special, like, paper. Either it's Santa paper because it literally has pictures of Santa on it, or it's just, like his special wrapping paper that's not the same wrapping paper. I mean, obviously, if you're doing Santa, Santa can't use the same wrapping paper that your parents use. Yeah. So Santa kind of has would, to have get, some it would, paper. It would have to be separate, yeah. And I think people do take it very far, though, because, like, I have heard people say that they've done things, like, for example, buying, like, 40 rolls of, like, a very specific Santa print wrapping paper and, like, hiding it in their attic. Because not only does Santa have special Santa paper, but it's, like, literally special paper that he always uses that can only come from the North Pole. Couldn't get this at the... <laughs> but this is also what I'm talking about when I say, like, going to elaborate lengths to, like, maintain the illusion. Because it's, like, now you're hiding, like, 40 rolls of wrapping paper in your attic and just praying that your kids don't, like, find it and then everything's ruined. I know. It's a problem. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of relieved that I'm not doing that right now. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, I don't have time for that stress. Right. But I do love knowing what other people... As much as I have criticism for people, like, just in, like my reasons for not doing Santa, I enjoy knowing how other people do it. Like, I enjoy knowing, like, does Santa wrap the presents? How does Rahina wrap the presents? When does Santa deliver the presents? Some people have Santa actually come on Christmas Eve and they unwrap the presents on Christmas Eve, too. Mm. That's, like, a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I know there's a... And forgive me, I cannot recall the name of it, but there's a thing that I believe a lot of, like, people of kind of, uh, like, I want to say, like, his, is Hispanic a correct term anymore? Mm. Like a Latin sort of descent. I think it's a cat. I think it's specifically a Catholic and Latinx fusion kind of a tradition that I know that some people do 
where he, it's like you go to church and then you stay up and then you at midnight you open the presents like on Christmas oh. Eve. I think that's a thing. Mm. Interesting. I think some people just do the presents on Christmas Eve, like after dinner or something. Like it's just kind of like Santa's come, we're doing the presents, and then mm-hmm. you know. So that's interesting to me too. Like just like when do the different things happen and why? Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to movies, I know that we have some favorites we haven't been able to watch. Well, it's weird because these are things that I would have imagined myself watching with my kids and that I even watched as a kid. Mm-hmm. And then now as a parent, some of them just have not been right for our family at this specific season of life. Like, And it kind of hurts because mm-hmm. some of them are like favorites that I do look forward to watching with our kids someday. It's just like not appropriate for our small children right now. I think there's a disconnect between what they're able to see and what they're able to like no that they shouldn't do in their own lives that's the thing like okay home alone home alone i'm really looking yeah. forward to sharing that movie with our kids because that's one of my top christmas movies mm-hmm. and it's one that i enjoyed from the time that i was a young child but i just don't think it would be at all a good idea to watch with our kids right now just just because i don't think that they have the judgment yet to totally understand okay so he can do these things but like you can't do anything at all like this without like accidentally murdering someone i think it's it's understanding that the rules of the universe are the same rules of like a wily e. coyote well, cartoon I, and i think part of it is that our kids don't watch those kind of cartoons we don't allow them to watch that kind of I, stuff and I so think, they have no frame of reference for it and i think i had that context cuz i had already you know even though like we didn't watch the most stuff I still think I saw more variety of things as a kid. And so I had the context of, like, having watched all those Bugs Bunny cartoons to understand, okay, the stuff happening in Home Alone is not stuff that can really happen in real life and have the people be okay. And so it's not something that you can, like, try at home. Like, there's an article that I sent you once about what if all the injuries in Home Alone were real. Yeah, like, how quickly they would have been murdered by, like, all the various things. And it's just, I don't think our kids are able to fully understand Mm -hmm. that. And so I just, it's not a good idea for them to see that right now. Yeah. And A Christmas Story is another one that, like, I've been looking forward to watching with our kids that just we're not quite ready for yet. Mm Mm-hmm. I just think, like, there's a lot of things about that that I find, like, really enjoyable, and I feel like just their take on it at this point in life is not going to lead to more joyfulness. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But, um, Christmas music, though, our, our children definitely have some some preferences. It's fun. We... It's, it's super fun listening to Christmas music with them right now because, mm-hmm. while they appreciate a lot of the Christmas songs that we also like, they definitely have certain songs that they love that just hit just right for them that aren't songs that I think we would have gravitated towards on our own. Like, what's what's an example? Like, they love, like, those, like, Kelly Clarkson and, like, is she the one that sings that Underneath the Tree song? Oh, yeah. Emerald said that she's her favorite girl. Yeah, and she, like, she she's, like, singing, holding the cake pop that she uses as a, the wooden pretend food cake pop that she uses as a print, pretend <laughs> microphone. Yeah, um, she also likes that, um, oh, Carrie Underwood song. Is it Carrie Underwood? Yeah. Which song is that? Um, Christmas is my favorite time of year. Yes, okay, maybe that's the song she, ke- okay, there's this problem that we keep having where she wants to listen to a certain song and she doesn't know the name, obviously, so she tries to sing part of it, but it's just so vaguely Christmassy that I can't figure out what song she wants to hear. Like, she'll be like, I want to hear the Christmas tree one. And I'm like, is it this one? And she's like, no. And she's like, almost, she's like, she'll be like almost crying because she wants to hear the song so badly. And I keep not understanding what song it's going to be. There's that thing where she shakes with anger and her little <laughs> strand of hair like shakes. I'm so scared when she does that. No, it's, but it's just because she so passionately wants to hear this Christmas song. And it's like, she doesn't understand why I can't play the right song for her but it's like I all of these songs are about a Christmas tree mm-hmm. she also I love how she sings Christmas songs but like she often sings the words slightly slightly off it's not not exactly right <laughs> right 
But no, that's that's fun. And I mean, I love Christmas music. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, blah, the Christmas music. Like, I'm I am excited every year to start listening to Christmas music again. Yeah, no, I've, I've thought a lot about Christmas music over the years, and I've written several articles about Christmas music. It's it's an interesting topic. It's it's interesting because like. Every, it seems like every band eventually does a Christmas album. And sometimes it's great. And sometimes, and sometimes it's, it's great. Incredible. And sometimes, sometimes it's hard to predict if it's going to be good or not. Uh, Bob Dylan's it. Christmas album is great. I was about to mention that. I love the Bob Dylan Christmas album. That's one of those ones that's grown on me. Like, it's become mm-hmm. one of my, like, holiday, like, oh, yeah. traditional staples. Others are just... Yeah, it's like, why? <laughs> why, why have you done this? this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, no, I mean, I, I love Christmas music. It's... Mm-hmm. I mean, I think you kind of like the Christmas books. I like it because I do not let myself listen to it until about, like, Thanksgiving hits and then, you know, through to Christmas and then it's, like, over for the year. So it's always exciting for me to, like... Oh, we go a little bit into January. Yeah, but, I mean, January is so dark. Anything that you... In my opinion, anything you can do to increase the joyfulness and the light in January is worth it. Mm-hmm. I agree. Including just continuing to celebrate Christmas <laughs> and refusing that it's over as... Every single needle drops off of your first Christmas tree. And it turns into a giant fire hazard. Yes. But that's another reason why I think it's a good idea to give your kid lots of Christmas presents if you can. Because mm-hmm. then you have more to like... I don't... Okay, here... Oh, here's another tradition. This, I wouldn't say this is a tradition. It's just more of a way of doing things. That mm-hmm. I think we we do come slightly at odds about this one, I feel like. But I think I'm definitely right about this. <laughs> I'm shocked. (laughs) No. um, But, okay. I think that there's kind of two ways of doing things as far as, like, when the gifts have been opened. There's the way of doing things where you, like, sort of use everything right away. And there's a way of doing things where you, like, slowly utilize a few items and, like, slowly dole them out. And I definitely am on the side of you kind of slowly, you know what I mean? Like if you get like new toys, you don't unwrap every toy and play with them that day. I think like you unwrap those slowly over the course of like the next few weeks, maybe. And I definitely feel like your tradition kind of comes from the other side of like on Christmas. I think you're like every single item is like utilized, maybe even simultaneously. And to me, I find that like honestly very stressful. (laughs) But... You just think I'm like Randy in A Christmas Story where he's like, whoopee, a Zeppelin! Well, I just feel like it's more, to me, it increases the, it it continues the fun longer if it's like, if you get a Lego set, and then like a week after Christmas, you can have the excitement of opening up that brand new Lego set and building it. To me, that's fun, like this anticipation. Like, I'm not saying you can't use anything on Christmas. Like, sure, eat a few pieces of Christmas candy, something like that. But I think, for me, part of it is, like, you get all the Christmas gifts and then you slowly enjoy them. So, it's for me to, like, unwrap and open every package and, like, use every item is just, like, why would you do this? <laughs> but, but I know that you feel, like, more like that's what you're supposed to do. It's just the joy of Christmas. <laughs> Um, well, on that note, thank you for being on the Rob Burgess Show once again. Oh, you're welcome. I am excited to be spending this Christmas with you. Me too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
Join the Rob Burgess Show mailing list. Go to tinyletter.com forward slash the Rob Burgess Show and type in your email address. Then respond to the automatic message. Also, please make sure to comment, follow, like, subscribe, share, rate, and review everywhere the podcast is available, including iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Twitter, Internet Archive, TuneIn, RSS, and now Spotify. The official website for the podcast is www.therobburgessshow.com. You can find out more about me by visiting my website, www.thisburgess.com. If you have something to say, record a voice memo on your smartphone and send it to therobburgessshow at gmail.com. Include voice memo in the subject line of the email. Also, if you want to call or text the show for any reason, the number is 317-674-3547. Until next time.